Hi everyone, my name is Shabani and I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant and founder of Zest Immigration Services Incorporation. Our today's video is based on the breaking news, the IRCC new press release on category-based express entry draws. So this was released by the IRCC on March 31st, 2023. So basically they are introducing a new process to welcome newcomers to Canada for permanent residence. Yes, this is applicable to both people outside and inside Canada. Let's talk about this thing in detail. But before we begin, let me clarify that this is not a new program. It's not a new pathway. It's simply a new category within the Express Entry system. So without any further ado, let's get started with the video. Make sure that you stay in this video till the end because there's so much for you to know about this new category. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Now, I hope you're able to see this new release by the RCC on your screen right now. Now, let me tell you, this somewhat appears to be Bill C-19, Bill C-19, because Bill C-19 aims to respond to the country's demographic and labor market needs. Under this, many grouping will be created on basis of economic goals or employment and academic experience or fluency in English or French. So this kind of appears to be grouping under the Bill C-19. So now let's start understanding this new category based draws or this new release by the RSCC. So this was released, as I said before, on May 31st, 2023. What it says essentially is with employers eagerly seeking to fill countless vacant positions across the country, immigration emerges as a vital piece of solving this puzzle. Recognizing this reality, the government of Canada is building an immigration system that acts as a catalyst for growth, empowering business, helping address their labor needs and strengthening French communities. When combined, these efforts will ensure Canadian benefit from economic and social prosperity for years to come. So in many of my videos, especially the ones that I create on my Instagram account, I always put special emphasis on learning French. I always encourage people to learn French because I knew this was going to benefit you a lot. And now see, we have this new category that's going to prioritize people who know French. So the Honorable Sean Fraser, who is the Minister of IRCC, announced this first ever launch of category-based selection for Canada's flagship economic immigration management system, which is Express Entry. Again, this is not a new program or a new pathway. It's just a new category-based selection process within the Express Entry system. Category-based selection will allow Canada to issue invitations to apply uh, to prospective permanent residents with specific skills, training, or language ability. So this year, category-based selection invitations will focus on candidates who have strong French language proficiency or work experience in the following fields, which is healthcare, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics professions, trades such as carpenters, plumbers, and contractors, transportation people, so uh, long-haul truck drivers and so on, and agriculture and agri-food sectors. So RSC believes that the category-based selection will make Express Entry more responsive to Canada's changing economic and labor market needs while building on high human capital approach that has been a hallmark of Canada's successful immigration system. These priorities maintain the focus on bringing in skilled workers with the potential to integrate and contribute to Canada's future. Before we move forward, let's quickly take a look at all the list of occupations, the NOC codes to be chosen for 2023 category-based express entry draws. So here's a list. These are the occupations from the healthcare sector. I'm going to scroll them slowly so that way you can read each of the occupations. If you have any of these occupation work experience, make sure that your profile is up to date because in that case, if they run category-based express entry drop, then you're highly likely to be selected. It's always a good idea to keep your express entry profile updated and active. If it's expired, please um, recreate it, update it, do whatever <laughs> that you have to do in order to keep it active. But just please make sure that you keep it active.
make sure that your ECA and uh, your IELTS or self scores are not expired. If you recently plan to take French or if you have taken French tests, then make sure please you update those scores as well. Here are STEM occupations. Trades occupation. Transportation. and agriculture and agri-food occupations. I'm going to link this down below in the description box that you can download it from there and always have this list with you. Now, before we understand how this is going to impact or run in the Express Entry system, let's go through quick facts released by the IRCC. So, Express Entry is Canada's flagship application management system for those seeking to immigrate permanently through the Federal Skill Worker Program, the Federal Skill Trades Program, the Canadian Experience Class, and a portion of the Provincial Nominee Program. Okay. Second fact is in June 2022, the Government of Canada made changes to the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, also known as IRPA, IRPA, to allow for the selection of immigrants based on key attributes that support economic priorities, such as specific work experience or knowledge of French. Third fact is legislative requirements to use these new authorities include that the minister engage in public consultations prior to establishing a new category with provinces and territories, members of industry, unions, employers, workers, worker advocacy groups, settlement provider organizations, and immigration researchers and practitioners. Each year, IRCC must also report to Parliament on the categories that were chosen during the previous year and the selection process including the rationale for choosing them. Next, the categories have been determined following extensive consultations with provincial and territorial partners, stakeholders, and the public, as well as a review of labor market needs. Next is, the first category-based invitations to apply are expected to be sent this summer. So yes, we do expect to have a category-based explicitly draw anytime this summer. Next is that immigration accounts for almost 100% of Canada's labor force growth, helping to address labor shortages in key sectors. Next is according to Employment and Social Development Canada, the number of occupations facing shortages doubled between 2019 and 2021. Under the Canada-Quebec Accord, Quebec establishes its own immigration levels from 2018 to 2022. Admissions under federal high-skill program accounted for between 34% and 40% of overall French-speaking admissions outside Quebec. Now let's understand Express Entry Round of Invitations and more details on category-based rounds of invitations in detail. All right, perfect. So I hope you're able to see uh, the RCC website on your screen right now. So let's understand Express Entry Rounds of Invitations. So over here, uh, because of the new release, uh, they have put this notice over here that we're introducing category-based rounds of invitation to support economic goals we identified. We're introducing rounds of invitations for specific categories of Express Entry candidates, right? As we scroll down, you can learn more details about it. It says we rank candidates in the pool using a points-based system called CRS, Comprehensive Ranking System. When we hold Express Entry rounds of invitation, we choose the type of round we hold, decide the number of candidates we need to invite, identify the highest ranking candidates from the pool who are eligible um, for the chosen uh, round type, 
and invite these candidates to apply for permanent residence. So if you see, uh, sometimes you see no program specified, that means uh, everyone, regardless of whether they were eligible in the Federal Skill Worker Program, Canadian Experience Class, or, or PNP, or Federal Skill Trades, all of them get invited if the draw specifically says no program specified, right? But sometimes you may have seen even in the past that there was a Federal Skill Worker specific draw, Canadian Experience Class, or PNP specific draw, right? So these are all the categories within the Express Entry System, right? Over here, types of rounds of invitations, okay? So we hold different types of rounds of invitations throughout the year. First is general draw. So general rounds of invitations. Uh, in general rounds of invitations, we invite top-ranking candidates in the pool who are eligible in one of the three Express Entry programs. So these three programs are again, Federal Skill Worker Program, Canadian Experience Class, and Federal Skill Trades Program. Now there are PNPs that run within the Express Entry system, but they are it, it, it's not a program. It's just a category, all right? Okay, next is program specified rounds of invitations. So in program specific rounds of invitations, we invite top ranking candidates who are eligible for a specific express entry program. For example, if we're holding a round specifically for the PNP, that means provincial nominee program, we would only invite candidates who are eligible for the PNP. Now, this is the new one which is category-based rounds of invitations, right? For category-based rounds of invitations, the minister establishes a category to meet a specific economic goal. We then invite top-ranking candidates in the poll we, uh, like who are eligible for this category. Category-based rounds add to general and program-specific rounds by inviting top-ranking candidates who can help us meet specific goals. Now to those uh, whose occupation is not in the category based of round of invitations or whose occupation is not even one of the in demands, right? Please do not worry guys, because you still do have an option of the general uh, general round of invitations within the Express Entry system. You also have the option of program specific rounds of invitations. And also there are many PNPs in which you potentially may be eligible. So please don't worry. So please don't worry guys, if your occupation is not in the category based 2023 list, uh, you still do have an option to learn French and still become eligible for the category based draws. If you're not interested or not able to learn French, then in that case, don't worry, there are over 100 PNPs. Uh, you perhaps may be eligible or you may try to become eligible in one of those. So one quick thing that I would like to highlight over here, because the list uh, the RCC has published, like it specifically says that these are the chosen or selected NOC codes for 2023 category based Express Entry draws. Now there are chances that the list may change, the NOC codes may change in 2024, 2025. We're not really sure because this depends on the labor market needs of all of the provinces or maybe entirely in Canada. However, chances are uh, there will be different occupations, perhaps uh, in 2024 right so always stay tuned uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet because here on this channel we regularly post all the updates on uh, Canada immigration and programs and almost every single thing All right, guys, moving on. So here's a quick note. Candidates with provincial or territorial nomination will continue to invite candidates with a provincial or territorial nomination through general and provincial nominee program specific rounds. And these candidates have demonstrated uh, they have the skills, education, and work experience to contribute to the province's or territory's economy. Now, there are some instructions for rounds of invitations, so let's go through them. Each round of invitations has a set of instructions that are posted online at the time of round and used by the Express Entry System to invite candidates from the pool. Okay, the instructions include the date and time of round, the number of candidates that will get an invitation to apply, the round type, so whether the round is general, program specific, or category based. Okay, you'll be able to see all this information when the round takes place. Sorry, when the round takes place, right? Uh, which immigration programs are included in the round and if this uh, applies for program specific rounds, okay? They'll also be posting or it's usually being posted eligibility for the criteria if this applies, especially that's gonna uh, apply to the category based rounds, right? Check your score and then use this information to see how likely you are to get an invitation in the next round, all right. 
So now let's see how IRCC chooses and reports on categories. So IRCC says we choose categories based on labor market information and projections. Input we receive from our partners, including provinces and territories and stakeholders across the country. Okay, each year we'll report to Parliament on the categories we choose the previous year, why and how we choose them, the instructions to establish a category, the number of invitations we issued for each category. We'll also include information about category-based selection in the Express Entry year-end report and monitor and assess categories on a regular basis. So like I said, chances are that the industry codes uh, for the uh, category-based occupations list may change in the next year, like in 2024, 2025, depending on the labor shortages or the needs. All right. So, so categories chosen for 2023, as we already know, Again, it's chosen for 2023, again, subject to change in the next year or sometime in the future. But let's just uh, see what we have right now on the table. So again, we have already gone through, but just like a, a quick reference, it's going to be French language proficiency, people who have French language proficiency. I would say a good proficiency in French is equivalent to CLB level 7 in each ability or more, right? If you come from healthcare occupations or STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, or math occupations, trade occupations, transport occupations, agriculture, and agriculture occupations, and so on. Here, let's see who is eligible. So to be eligible for an invitation through a category-based round, you must meet all the requirements in the instructions for that round. Okay, when we hold a category-based round of invitations, we'll rank candidates in the pool who meet the category requirements and invite top-ranking candidates to apply for permanent residence. Okay, find out who is eligible for this category. So let's say French language proficiency over here, eligibility for the French language proficiency category. To be eligible, you must have French language test results. Show that a minimum of score of seven in four language ability so like i said equivalent to seven clb okay and meet all the other requirements in the instructions for the round full eligibility details will be available in the instructions of each round but again uh, like if you have taken french tests if you have scored equivalent to CLB level 7 or more, do not forget to include that. If there is any update in your profile, if you come from any of these occupations, you can also see NOC codes over here on the RCC website. If you come from any of these occupations, if you have any work experience, regardless of whether that experience is from any country, like from Canada or from anywhere outside Canada, US, India, uh, Japan, China, Pakistan, Saudi, anywhere, literally anywhere, please keep your profile updated because China Chances are, if you meet any of these requirements, like if you're able to speak French, if you've taken the French test, or if you come from any of these occupations, if you have like perhaps a job offer or work experience, anything in any of these occupations, chances are you may get selected in the next category based draw. I mean, like the first <laughs> category based draw, right? Or maybe at the ones in the future as well, right? So please again, keep your profile updated. So one quick thing to note here, uh, only the job offer in one of these occupations will not do. You need some experience, okay, to be considered for the category based jobs. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Let's explore uh, details on each of them. So healthcare occupations, eligibility for the healthcare occupation category. To be eligible, you must have accumulated within the past three years, at least six months of continuous work experience that can be either in Canada or abroad. Again, people inside and outside Canada take advantage take advantage right <laughs> so again have accumulated within the past three years at least six months of continuous work experience all right continuous in a single occupation listed in the table below again we've already gone through all these occupations but what i'll do i'll put uh, the link in the description for you so that you can access this you can take a look at this information at any time all right meet all the requirements in the in, in uh, sorry meet all the requirements in the instructions for that round right full eligibility details will be available in the instructions for each round but basically like you know guys if you have at least six months of experience in any of such NOC codes, 
All right. Basically, uh, you are now considered in the occupational category, given that you meet the other uh, program requirements. So I would say if you have at least in total one year of experience, which will technically make you eligible to create a profile in the express entry. Right. So you're going to have to meet the one year experience requirement as well as the IELTS, the EC, if you have for an education and all that. So just basic express entry profile requirements. Plus, on top of this, if you're meeting the category based occupation specific requirements and all that, then chances are you may get invited. Let's explore the next one. Science, technology, engineering and math. Uh, that means STEM occupations. What's the eligibility for this? Uh, almost the same. To be eligible, uh, you must have accumulated within the past three years at least six months of continuous work experience in Canada or abroad in a single occupation listed in the table below. Again, meet all the requirements and the instructions for that round, which will be published uh, or will be available with each round. All right. The trades, again, the same. To be eligible, you must have accumulated within the past three years, six months of continuous work experience in Canada or abroad, and the rest is the same. For the transportation, too, uh, it's almost the same thing. Again, uh, uh, in the past three years, uh, at least six months of experience. In the agriculture and agri-food occupations, again, the same thing. Have accumulated within the past three years, at least six months of continuous work experience in Canada or abroad, and in under the occupations listed over here. Alright, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit that bell icon right there so that you get notified every single time I post a new video. If you wish to talk about your Canadian immigration case or your Canadian immigration options, so feel free to contact us at www.sesqr.ca or simply go to the description box of this video, click on the booking link through which you can book a consultation with me from anywhere in this world. Also, I have linked lots of information down in the description box, so please do not forget, go ahead and check it out. Take care, guys. See you next time.